Two senior management staff reminded in probe over FIC's London hotel purchase. UMP to become first university to offer railway technology studies. Good evening, thanks for joining us. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The two former key officials of two companies were remanded for six days in relation to Felder Investment Corporation Syndrome Burr Heights or FIC's purchase of a high-end property in Kensington, London. Now, the two men, aged 36 and 45, the property unit head of a postal service company and director of an asset consulting company, respectively, are suspected of being involved in the price and property evaluation of the hotel concerned. Magistrate Nick Isfahani Tasnim allowed both men to be remanded after hearing an application from the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, or MACC. FIC, the investment arm of Felder, acquired the four-star hotel between 2013 and 2015 for a total of 334 million ringgit, and MACC is now probing this extensively. Both men were suspected to have manipulated the purchase price of the hotel, resulting in the FIC paying higher than the actual market price. They were detained at about 1 p.m yesterday when they were summoned to the MACC headquarters in Putrajaya to give their statements. University of Malaysia Pahang or UMP will become the first technical institute in the country to introduce studies in railway technology. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak said with the introduction of the course, UMP is poised to play a major role in the upcoming construction of the East Coast Rail Link or ECRL. Speaking at UMP in Pekan today, Dr. Sri Najib said UMP Gambang campus's close proximity to the ECRL route, which will be launched in September, is also a plus point. Memberi penumpuan dan fokus kepada teknologi kereta api ataupun real technology. Ini sesuai dengan kedudukan UMP berada berhampiran dengan Landasan Kereta Api East Coast Rail Link di mana projek besar-besaran ini akan kita lancarkan pada bulan September yang akan datang. The course entitled ECRL Industrial Skill Training Program will commence in September with 300 students for its inaugural cohort. In honouring its commitment to end tensions in Marawi City in the southern Philippines, Defence Minister Datuk Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein said Malaysia plans to send a medical and religious support team to the conflict zone after dispatching humanitarian aid to the city yesterday morning. Now, helping to build a clean water supply system for the local communities is also part of the mission's plan. Sebab itu um, kita kena win the hearts and minds um, mendekati mereka dan ini merupakan sesuatu yang bu, um, bukan hanya berkisar kepada uh, selatan Filipina kerana saya bimbang kalau tak dibendung di sana dia boleh merebak ke negara kita juga. Malaysia's humanitarian mission to Marawi departed from Subang Airport at 6.30 a.m. yesterday. Nine cabin crew and 19 smart members on board a A400M Royal Military Air Force aircraft embarked on a mission to deliver 16 tons of medicines and other supplies to the conflict zone. The aid will be handed over to the Philippine NGOs for distribution to the local communities. Two specific initiatives for the armed forces and veteran personnel are expected to be announced in the near future. Now, the Veterans Welfare Initiative and the Housing Initiative for the Armed Forces were among five main agendas of the Ministry of Defence in softening the cost of living to military personnel and the veterans. Defence Minister Datuk Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein said the announcement on both initiatives will be made by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak as early as August. Dalam keadaan ekonomi yang tidak menentu, kekangan-kekangan yang kita hadapi, apa yang kita dapat uh, umumkan ini pun syukur Alhamdulillah. Saya harap mereka akan terima baik kerana ini hanya permulaan. Dalam keadaan bila ekonomi dah bertambah pulih nanti, banyak, lebih banyak lagi yang kita nak bantu. 
Commenting further, he said the housing initiative is divided into two schemes, namely the Armed Forces Family Home and the Affordable Housing Scheme, a joint effort with state governments and the private sector. Dr. Sri Shamudin said to date, two affordable housing projects have been implemented in Mutiara Rini, Johor and Kuala Lumpur, whilst the project is still in its construction phase in Sagari, Pera. He said this when met after launching the Amno Kulai Division meeting in Johor. The Education Ministry is urging all parties, including the Education Department, to enhance efforts to curb disciplinary problems among students following the frequent occurrence of bully and gangsterism cases in schools lately. Its Minister, Dr. Sri Mazia Khalid, said the community must be more proactive in detecting disciplinary issues among students so that they can be addressed immediately. Ada sesuatu dalam masyarakat ni yang uh, kena kena kita kena hadapi dengan uh, dunia baru ni lah. Kan? You bukan saja you jangka, you fikir, tapi dia buat. You ingat tak apa, budak-budak takkan sampai situ kot kan. Takkan sampai macam tu. Tapi hari ni punya punya mentaliti tu, uh, kalau masa kita sekolah dulu takkan kita pergi racun kawan kot. Hari ni dia bawa racun-racun kawan tu. He said this when asked to comment on the incident where a student had laced an alleged bully's noodles with cockroach poison in Sri Aman Sarawak on Thursday. In the incident, the suspect was picked up from his home on Friday after the victim's father lodged a police report. The suspect was released on police bail after his statement was recorded. However, investigation on the case is still ongoing. Datuk Sri Mazir has ordered the District Education Office to double the efforts in identifying schools that are possible bullying hotspots. The Road Transport Department, or RTD, will install another 50 cameras at strategic locations nationwide under the Automated Awareness Safety System, or AWAS, by year-end. Now, RTD Director General Dr. Sri Nasri Siron today said the installation process is part of efforts to reduce the number of fatal accidents, and to date, 21 cameras have been installed. Dr. Sri Nasri said the initiative was also to improve awareness among people to follow traffic rules when on the road. He said RTD would give due consideration and focus on traffic offences, especially those beating traffic lights, mainly motorcyclists. He said motorcyclists accounted for the highest number of traffic offences. Dr. Sri Nasri added that though operations were being carried out on a regular basis to nab traffic offenders who beat traffic lights, special focus was channeled towards Ops Lampu Mera, which started on July. July 12th. He also said that this month alone, 300 motorcyclists have died in accidents due to beating the red lights, while 229 had suffered minor or serious injuries. Now, the search for the remaining missing General Operations Force or PGA member who went missing while on a fishing trip near the estuary of the Kinabatanga River in Sandakan Sabah continued today. Sandakan Fire and Rescue Department Chief Muhammad Razali Awang Ahmad said the search is being conducted along Tundun Buhangin and Mumyang areas where the fishing boat was reported to have capsized. Muhammad Razali stated that the search team involved six members from the Water Rescue Team PPDA using two dive boats. On Thursday evening, both corporals who were attached to PGA Tundun Buhangin went fishing at Sungai Kinabatangan before their boat capsized. Yesterday, the body of Corporal Walter Dennis was found at around 2 p.m. and was sent to the Duchess of Kent Hospital in Sadakan for post-mortem. The remaining victim, Corporal Mohammad Hanib alias Musli, was still missing. Chief Justice Dan Sri Matrao Sharif heads the list of 1,481 people conferred various state awards by Yang Dipetua Negeri Tun Abdul Rahman Abbas in conjunction with his 79th birthday today. And the four-day investiture ceremony is scheduled to continue next Tuesday and end on Thursday. Dan Sri Mat Raus was the only recipient of the Darja Utama Pangkuan Negeri or DUPN which carries the title Datuk Sri Utama at the event held at Dewan Sri Pinang. 
Other awards include the Darja Gamilang Pangkuan Negeri, which carries the title Datuk Sri, bestowed to Lembaga Tabung Haji CEO Datuk Sri Johan Abdullah and Immigrations Director Datuk Mustafa Ali. Pulau Pinang Deputy Police Chief Datuk Rosli Chik was one of the recipients to be awarded the Darjah Yang Mulia Pangkuan Negeri or DMPN with the title Datuk. Earlier, Tun Abdul Rahman arrived at the venue at 9am accompanied by his consort Topuan Majimur Sharif. After a 17-gun salute, Tun Abdul Rahman then saluted the Guard of Honour lined up inside the venue. Among the attendees include Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng and his wife along with state exco members. Now, the Uda Pekan Bridge Run 2017 has the potential to become a robust domestic and international tourism product. Now, this is on top of attracting tourists to the state to its various renowned locations in conjunction with Visit Pahang Year. Now, according to Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak, the run will also drive the tourist traffic to the royal town of Pekan, thereby stimulating the local economy. <laughs> Saya juga berharap bahawa melalui acara seperti ini kita dapat meningkatkan awareness orang terhadap pekan. Jadi bila kita ada Uda Bridge Pekan Bridge Run ini kita dapat mengenengahkan pekan ini dari sudut produk pelancongan. Speaking during a speech at the prize giving ceremony for participants of the Uda Pekan Bridge Run in Pekan this morning, Datuk Sri Najib, who is also Pekan Member of Parliament, also advised Malaysians to practice a healthy lifestyle by incorporating exercise in their daily routines. Now, 10,000 people are expected to throng Kuala Trungganu this weekend to witness the finale of the 34th Malaysian Chinese Cultural Festival. Now, the three-day festival, which began yesterday, held in line with the Visit Beautiful Trungganu 2017 campaign, is also a great platform to showcase and promote the cultures of the various Chinese clans in the country. The program chairman, Tan Ing Seng, said the festival also aims to spread the spirit of unity among all Malaysians, as well as to give the younger generation the chance to learn more about Malaysian cultures. The festival, organized by Dewan Perhimpunan Tionghoa Trungganu, is expected to boost the state's tourism sector and increase the income of the locals. A line of attractions will be available throughout the festival, which cultural shows... Booths showcasing 13 different Chinese clans, Chinese calligraphy demonstrations and acupuncture treatment. Petroleum National Bahau Petronas has delivered its first liquefied natural gas or LNG cargo to Thailand. Now this followed a 15-year sale and purchase agreement signed between its subsidiary, Petronas LNG Limited, PLL, and Thailand's PTT Public Company Limited, PTT. According to Petronas Vice President of LNG Marketing and Trading, Ahmad Adli Alias, under the agreement, the LNG would be sourced globally from the group's portfolio of supply. The cargo was delivered on July 20th, 2017 to the Maptaput Terminal at Rayong on the east coast of the Gulf of Thailand from the Petronas LNG complex in Bintulu, Sarawak. Petronas and PTT management were present at the terminal to witness the delivery. Petronas has been supplying piped natural gas to Thailand from its Yetagun project in Myanmar and from Thailand-Malaysia Joint Development Area in the Gulf of Thailand. Since the group's first LNG delivery in 1983, the group has built a combined capacity of 34 million tonnes per annum. PLL is committed to deliver up to 1.2 million tonnes per annum of LNG to PTT for 15 years, and both companies are exploring more collaboration opportunities in LNG and natural gas value chain. Now, Pahang coach Dola Saleh has been suspended for 18 months from all football-related activities and fined 30,000 ringgit by the Football Association of Malaysia, FAM, for making negative remarks about the association. Now, the former international criticized the standard of refereeing and other matters concerning FAM after the Super League match against Felda United in Junker on July 1st.
The FAM Disciplinary Committee found Dola guilty under Article 61 of the Disciplinary Code, which was read together with Article 88 of the Association Statutes. Dola, however, will serve the opening nine months of the suspension first. The suspension took effect on Friday and will end on April 20th, 2018. The remaining nine months are a suspended sentence pending good behaviour. Dola, however, can appeal the decision. And that's it from us in our top story. Two senior management staff reminded for six days in probe over FIC's London hotel purchase. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Before we go, we leave you with visuals from the 13th edition of the MAX or the International Aviation and Space Salon in Zukovsky, Russia. Now, the event is a chance for the aviation industry to get previews of the latest planes and for the general public to enjoy aerial acrobatics. I'm Jessica Lee. Have a lovely evening.